At a public session in the Hopkinton Library, the Elementary School Building Committee made it clear that now is the time to give your input on what you think about the project locations and designs and what your preference would be. People, if people want to weigh in on which location is best, now is the only time to do that. Uh, by the end of February, early March, the latest, we will have concluded our evaluation with community input and uh, expertise from the, the team and made a decision on the site. Right now, we're looking at four locations, 11 different options at those four locations, but by another six to eight weeks from now, we'll have one choice, and that's what's gonna be going to town meeting. So we need people to get involved and to buy in and help us uh, make the choice that we think is gonna work and uh, be well received uh, when it comes to that vote in town meeting. Chair Joe Markey explained the ways you can reach the ESBC. Uh, we have a website, HopkintonSchoolProject.com, where you can find more information. As there's a whole bunch of stuff being created on a daily basis now, and those key documents are added here as they come available. Uh, this is where you can find more information. Is there a place to click to provide email feedback as well on the site? I believe there is. Yeah, down on the bottom left there. And we're on social media. Realize not everyone at Hopkins is on social media, but for those that are, uh, we've been using Facebook. You can find us at Hopkins School Project on Facebook and uh, interact there to ensure you get future updates or check there on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, we have Hopkinton ESPC on Twitter. Uh, HCAM has been doing a monthly uh, update series in addition to covering each of our meetings where they ask us each month at kind of a different topic and we, we cover that in depth on this uh, HCAM uh, show. The timeline was explained for building the new school. But the timeline really was <laughs> starting a couple years ago uh, uh, when the district submitted application to the state then formed the committee. Over the past year we've been forming the project team. Uh, right now we're, we're, we're now concluded the phase that um, the MSBA calls forming the project team. I think we're in module three module of three. their program and the, the key element there is the actual execution of the feasibility study. So in town meeting, May 2013, Hopkinton uh, funded $600,000. Now that we're at the point of doing engineering evaluation of sites and working with architects and project managers, we're now starting to use that money to execute the feasibility study and a portion of that will be reserved for the detailed um, schematic design on our one chosen site. So as far as timeline from here out, uh, again, we expect to have a site decision on which location by February, March, and then uh, we would proceed into schematic design on that one site and have a special town meeting in the fall of 2015 to come to town meeting with a funding proposal for constructing the new school, at which point we would know the MSBA reimbursement and other things like that as well. One of the questions asked was about if there was budget variation among the possible sites of the new school. The Irvine site is a big property, um, and is there an overall budget for this whole project? And so the acquiring a site is going to eat out of the budget for the whole project, or is there some flexibility with budget from site to site? They're, they're, at this juncture, we're still at the very beginning of this journey, yeah. so the, the budget has not been established. Uh, you know, part of our job is to kind of collect all that information and, and you know, evaluate it for the town with the with the building committee itself. So, at this point, there's no set hard stop on the budget. You know, it, you know, it may be worthwhile for the town to purchase the land at Irvine, for example, because you're gaining more than just the school. You have future capacity to build other playing fields or things at that particular school where you don't have that kind of benefit at, say, the center school. And that may be worth a slight, slight premium over the cost of just building a straight school. So, um, you know, we're still evaluating all the options and we will be looking at all those various levels of cost. Um, another point here is that if we went with the options that um, renovate the existing school, we've got to come up with temporary costs. You know, if we have to provide rental trailers or an alternate location for schools, we have to add all those costs in. So. Even the options we use, town-owned land that you already own, have other premiums associated with.